In a previous video, I covered testing unminable versus rainbow miner versus mining Dutch for Kapow on three systems that I have. Well, today I'm going to do a second round of that testing. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin it up against my the profit switcher auto exchanger utility that I've created. And then we're going to match that up against unminable. And also against another pool called Raven Miner. Now, once again, we're using the same same cards, same systems. So we're dealing with uh, two Sapphire X080s, the G Pros. So these are the mining versions of the RX 6700s. They are all running the same undervolt and same overclock. We're not going to mine with CPUs. Uh, we're going to leave the CPUs on a different algo, different coin, different wallet, everything, mining something different. Uh, but the GPUs themselves will be a set up in this manner. And we're going to be mining uh, to those three pools. And all of those are going to be auto-converting to Matic, or as it's branded, Polygon now. The biggest reason I chose Polygon is if we hop on over to the Raven Miner pool, and this is a pool a lot of you may not be aware of, I didn't realize they had auto exchanging until I noticed it in uh, Rainbow Miner. So Rainbow Miner has a recent update where they show you like the little icon next to each pool if they support auto exchanging. And I noticed that there was an icon next to the Raven Miner pool. So I hopped on over here, and if you go to the auto exchange section and scroll down, you can see they actually support Mining to this, you just specify the payout address you want, and in the password field, you put whatever coin you want. And they're using Change Now as their provider, and these are the coins that are supported. So you can mine Ravencoin and get paid out in either Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Cardano, Dogecoin, or Polygon. And here's the minimum limits. And the reason I chose... I was on the fence between doing Bitcoin Cash and Polygon, and the reason is the minimum limit. Because we're only mining with two 6700s, essentially, we're only going to have about 40 mega hash uh, on each of the pools with Kapow hash rate. So I wanted something that had a lower, lower limit so that we get more frequent exchanging um, versus only exchanging once every several days. So... With this one, we can get uh, that more frequent exchanging. Uh, and so if we hop on over to what, what to mine real quick. Let's just see what our yield would be. So we have 40.75 mega hash. So our daily yield is around 24, 25 coins. So if we stuck with the minimum, this would auto exchange around five times a day. Uh, minimum, it's probably going to be closer to like two or three times a day. Uh, so if there is price fluctuations with Polygon, which there typically isn't, it could either be advantageous or dis disadvantageous. So what we're going to do is I've actually ran a simple test already just to make sure this mining pool works with Matic because they actually, they changed their ticker. So I wasn't sure um, if it was Paul, if it was Matic, what it may be. So what we've got on this one is, uh, you can see I've accrued 0.073. The wallet limit is five. Payout frequency is not set. The auto exchange limit is 4.58. Our effective limit is five. So if we scroll down to the uh, payout settings, here you can change that minimum payout threshold. And this is going to also drive uh, the auto exchanging, I believe. So. It says effective limit auto exchange will be executed when the cleared balance reaches both the wallet and the exchange thresholds. So we know the wallet limit is five um, and the auto exchange limit is 4.58. So every time we would get to five coins, in theory, it should do that conversion. And so uh, this payout, I'm not sure if this will apply to the Matic or to the Raven that it would then auto exchange and auto payout. Not 100% sure uh, how this will work, but we're going to give this a whirlwind and see how it does. So this is the one pool. Um, we're also going to be using unminable 
mining kapow again to polygon and then we're going to use my profit switcher as well and we've got this set up so if we go to hive os rigs i haven't started hashing on any of these yet we will be doing that in this video but if you go to you see tower one i've already actually set it up and i've already set up uh, the way my profit switcher works is you define the coins you want to mine and the flight cheat that HiveOS should launch. And if you do overclock templates uh, per algorithm, it'll automatically launch those overclock templates as well. This is the same as you going in HiveOS and selecting these flight cheats. Now, because we're not tracking power usage across the board, we're only tracking straight revenue. I set the power rate to zero for all these. If we sort by profit, this is kind of the real-time profitability that we would expect. So we can see Raven is currently number one. Uh, nice House Kapow is actually second, but we're gonna have we've got that disabled as you can see. Uh, same thing with Zergpool, that would be about thirty-three cents. So we've got that disabled. Pro hashing is another one, uh, thirty-two cents. We've got that one disabled. Uh, Satox is enabled. Obviously, that is supported on trading over or trade over. Uh, mining Dutch, we've got disabled. So when I ran that test, uh, you may recall Unminable did a lot better than uh, Mining Dutch. And here you can kind of see that being evident here in our profit calculations, where Ravencoin Direct would be 38 cents and uh, Mining Dutch would be. 31 cents so uh just something something of note to notice there and then we've got neoxa we've got aid pin we've got clore we've got nor ai and we also have ai power grid so i could have done firo i've could have done uh other prog pal coins um you know really any coin but i wanted to keep this on a equal playing field and so we're sticking to the kapow coins on all the platforms. But what that means is we're going to be profit switching between just Kapow using my profit switcher and only the Kapow coins that Trade Ogre supports. And then uh, Raven Miner is going to mine Raven and you know uh, auto convert to Polygon. And then Unminable is also going to mine Raven and auto convert to Polygon. Now, the reason I say that we're only using what is on Trading Ogre because if we hop on over to the auto exchanging part of my profit switcher, you can see we're going to use Trade Ogre. We're going to auto convert to Polygon. Uh, I'm excluding BNB and Husat because I currently have some a little bit of funds on the exchange for those. I don't want those to auto convert in. Um, we will be using a trading pair of USDT. So this means it's going to swap uh, essentially when it comes in. Uh, if Raven comes in, it's going to swap Raven for USDT and then USDT for Polygon. Um, that's kind of the the intermediary pair that we have to do because there's no direct f of all the Kapow coins direct to Polygon. Um, if there is, it will try to do the direct swap first. If not, it will go through the trading pair. And that's pretty much it. So... We're going to turn this on. Now, uh, the as I mentioned, so Tower 1, we're going to go ahead and uh, the easiest thing for me to do is, if we go to Core Configuration, the other thing I want to talk about is the difference threshold. So the this profitability calculation allows you to define what threshold it will use before it switches to the next most profitable coin. So if we hop back on over to the HiveOS rigs and we take a look at the profitability that we're working with right now on Tower 1. So right now, Ravencoin is sitting at 39 cents. You can see it just refreshed. Um, so in order for, let's say, Satox or Neoxa, to, in order for the profit switcher to switch to those, we would be looking at needing, uh, so if we did 5%, it's going to be 0 0.39 times 0 0.05. So it needs to be about $0.02 cents more profitable. So that means that we would have to be looking at about $0.41 cents profitability before it was going to switch over. 
This prevents a lot of hopping back and forth. Uh, in a typical scenario, I would normally have like Zerg pool turned on. And here you can see it's so close that that threshold will prevent it from just swapping between these two. Um, so any ones that are enabled true is the only ones that are going to get profit switched between. Uh, so all these false uh, will just be ignored by the system. All right. So now let's just hop back on over. Let's make sure we've got, okay. We want to go ahead and enable profit switching and it's going to run. This is a cron schedule. So it's going to run every 15 minutes. So 1145 noon, 1215, 1230. And this is when it's going to check for uh, any profitability changes. So I'm going to run this on 15 minute intervals. We're also going to run exchanging on 15 minute intervals. Um, this platform does allow you to specify anything you want. So if you wanted to do 30 minute intervals, you could do that. But we're going to stick with 15. Let's go ahead and hit save here. And then we're going to hop back in over to the auto exchanging section. And let's just make sure this is enabled, which it is. And uh, the other function that this platform allows is auto withdrawals. The Trade Ogre API does not support auto withdrawals. So we're going to leave everything on the system. But if you look at like the CoinX one, you can see I actually have an auto withdrawal on here. Um, whenever that threshold gets met, it will auto withdraw it to my cold wallet. And, then let, and there's no full disclaimer. There's no dev fee of any sort with this program. Um, the profit switching, it doesn't like try to, you know, mine to a dev wallet, anything like that. Same thing with the auto exchanging. There's no fees. So the only fees you're working with here are the exchange fees or any pool fees. Uh, let's hop on over to the Hive OS ASIC or Hive OS rig section rather. And we're going to make sure that our rig is enabled. So tower one, it's currently off. We're going to go ahead and toggle this on Hit update. This will begin profit switching it. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and manually launch the flight sheet uh, since we're about seven minutes away from when it would flip over. So we're just going to do this one real quick. So the AMD Raven one is the one we want to launch. So we'll go down to AMD Raven. So we're going to go ahead and launch that one. And then, so that was Tower 1. Tower 2, we are going to run. Pull up my little list here um so then this is the list that we're working with so we've got tower one there tower two we're going to do unminable to polygon do, do, do. uh unminable to polygon is this one and then tower three will be uh, Raven Miner to Polygon, which is that one. And I'm going to go back to Tower 1 here, and we're going to adjust this, because I realized that I forgot to do the other part, which is the CPU Miner. So I keep everything on an equal playing field. So we're, let's go ahead and duplicate that. And do, do, do. we're going to add minor. We're going to do XMR. We're going to do BNB here. We're going to do configure in minor. We're going to do XM rig. Let's go ahead and set that up. And that's going to be the equivalent of this config. And turn on one gig pages and we will be good. Okay, and then the wallet. Let's just 
make sure I didn't have to prefix that. Yep. Okay. All right, there we go. So everything is should be on an equal playing field now. If we hop back on to the main dashboard, we've got, uh, let's see here. It's, it's probably still adjusting. There we go. It's restarting that one. So we've got Tower 3 is going to uh, Raven Miner. So we should start to see that connect here in a minute. You can see it already connected. We've got Tower 2 going to Unminable. This one typically takes a few minutes before it detects over here. Let's see where is Kapow. Kapow's here. Hasn't detected that worker yet. And uh, the primary one being uh, Tower 1 and my Profit Switcher, it's still ramping up obviously from that restart um, but that one will be going to so Raven I'm using two miners each of these I'm using um, what I deem kind of be the best pool for each that I would typically use for mining so the way that's going to work is it's going to mine to that pool and then we're going to uh, basically get that payout will go to the Trade Ogre wallet, and then our auto exchanger uh, will profit switch off of Trade Ogre. Now, Trade Ogre does have minimum uh, exchange dollar value wise, so uh, typically it's one US dollar is the minimum threshold to exchange. So we may not see as frequent exchanges on the uh, exchange side, uh, and just Full disclaimer from a tracking perspective, I logged into Trade Ogre. I did have a little bit of a balance on NorAI and AIDP, so I just wanted to put those in here. Uh, it's a very small amount. Uh, AIDP was three tenths of a cent, XNA was one tenth of a cent, and then on the Raven Miner uh, pool, we had one tenth of a cent in rewards. So just tracking this for full transparency. Uh, and so we're going to let this test run for probably through mining disrupt. So we'll probably actually run this test uh, to the end of March. Uh, let's say, yeah, let's say like March 30th or so. Um, so this is actually gonna be more of a long-term test. 